Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and many of you asked me to make this video, so here it is. We're diving deep into the wine scene of Portugal. Let's go. Portuguese wines have a lot of things going for them, as the country has a long history, many indigenous grape varieties, diverse terroirs, and on top of that, the wines are generally pretty cheap. It's the 10th largest producer of wine, and while the country overlooks the Atlantic and was instrumental in discovering the rest of the world, it was also isolated for a long time and therefore stuck to old traditions, methods and varieties. With Port and Madeira, Portugal continues to produce some of the most famous fortified wines in the world, but there are also great table wines coming out of Portugal, especially today. Leon prepared a lineup of Portuguese wines that we can taste together. Well, technically I'm going to taste them and you can sit back and relax and enjoy them through me. Okay, we're starting off with bubbles as one does, and this is the 2019 Vadio Bruto Rosé, a sparkling wine from Bayrada DOC. Bayrada is the most important region when it comes to sparkling wine in Portugal, and they're using the grape variety Baga, which can on one hand produce really structured and intense red wines, but on the other hand, it can produce really fresh and vibrant sparkling wines. The tradition of producing sparkling Baga in Bayrada well, that's a bit of a tongue twister. Goes back a long time, apparently to the end of the 19th century. This winery, though, was founded in 2005. They do a whole bunch pressing and then fermentation in stainless steel and barrels, and they leave the wine on the lees for 18 months to give it a bit more roundness, these brioche flavors. But, well, let's just pop the cork. All right. Didn't spill any wine. That's pretty good. Listening to sparkling wine being poured is ASMR to my ears. So as you can see, the wine is copper colored. There's a slight red tinge here. It looks appealing. It is more fruit forward than some rosé champagnes would be. It smells of cherries, raspberries, strawberries, very fruit driven, but not in a kitschy way. It's actually quite beautiful. There's also a little bit of bread, not bread, but bread, like rye bread flavor coming through. It's not super brioche, but it's nice. I like it. On the palate, it's rich and concentrated, but it finishes very, very fresh, very vibrant, very lively. It has 12% of alcohol, so the alcohol is fairly low. There's good concentration there, but not too much. I think this is really good. It might be a bit surprising to hear that Portugal can produce great sparkling wine because people assume that sparkling wine needs to come from a cool climate in Northern Europe. But, well, that's not necessarily the case. First of all, Bayrada is very close to the Atlantic and you get lots of freshness coming from the ocean. Secondly, Baga manages to keep maintain the freshness, the acidity, and therefore you can have lots of freshness in the wine. And third, it's really important to pick the harvest date correctly. For sparkling wine, you generally harvest early in order to make sure that the wine, well, doesn't necessarily have too much body and keeps good acidity and good freshness levels. Lip smacking fresh. I really enjoy this wine. I'm going to rate it 88 points. I don't think it's a super serious wine, so it doesn't have the complexity to go above 90 in my book. But I think it is really nice and I would love to drink this with some cured ham. That would be mm, just delicious. So next up, we have the 2022 Anselmo Mendes Alverino Contacto from Vino Verde. Vino Verde is an interesting region. On the one hand, you have lots of bulk wine production of very simple, slightly fizzy, sometimes off dry white wines. And on the other hand, you have very complex wines. And Alvarinho oftentimes plays an important role when it comes to these high-end wines. The grape variety combines delicate fruit flavors with good freshness and nice body. And especially when you leave it in contact with the lees, with the yeast cells, with the dead yeast cells from the fermentation, you get a very exciting mouthfeel. So this winery started in 1997 and the Alvarino Contacto, as the name suggests, uh, gets some skin contact. So they leave the juice in contact with the skins to extract some more flavor, get a little bit more texture into the wine. As far as I understand, this is not an orange wine, so they didn't leave it in contact with the skins for a long time, just 
for a little bit to get well, an additional dimension. In this case, they also played with lease, so they steered up the lease on a regular basis in order to get a little bit more mouthfeel and concentration into the wine. So as you can see, this is not an orange wine. It's actually fairly light in color and it smells really nice. It smells of apricots and white peaches. It doesn't have a lot of yeasty flavors coming through. It's just really beautifully fruit -driven. On the palate, it has lots of freshness. <laughs> this is what you call mouth watering. Lots of freshness, lots of acidity really vibrant and lively. But it doesn't necessarily have the concentration and the body of a really great Alvarinho. I'm going to rate this 88 points. I think this is exactly the light, fresh white wine that you want in your glass while eating some seafood, some prawns, some fish, even grilled fish. But yeah, everything that comes out of the sea because this grows next to the sea and I think you can feel that. The next wine is the 2021 Druida Encruzado Reserva from Dao. Dao is basically the next region when you move further inland from Bayrada, the region where the sparkling wine was from. Dao is surrounded by mountains. It goes from 200 meters to 1000 meters in altitude. It's quite a wild and really beautiful region and they make some amazing wines. When it comes to red wines, they work with the Portuguese flagship varietal Turiga Nacional. They also use Tinta Ruiz, which is actually Tempranillo in Spain, and they work with Jaén, which is actually Mencia in Spain. Wine is so complicated. When it comes to white wine, Encruzado plays an important role. The Oxford Companion actually states that Encruzado is the jewel in the crown of white wines from Dao, and I do agree. So this winery was founded in 2012. They use lots of the native grape varieties in Dao and they actually spontaneously ferment this wine. They use barrels. 20% are new and 80% are used barrels. Again, they play with the lees. So they leave the wine in contact with the yeast cells for 10 months to, well, again, give it a little bit more complexity and a little bit more body. This is again really nice. It combines like bruised apple characters, green apple notes with those very delicate oak flavors. So it's really complex and really balanced. On the palate, again, you wouldn't necessarily think you're in Southern Europe. There's so much freshness, so much tension. The acidity is quite high. The finish is very long, but there's still body. I mean, this one doesn't have a lot of alcohol. It's at 12% of alcohol, so it's really refreshing. Complete wine, a really complete wine. If you like like Chablis or um, slightly oaked Burgundies, this is something you should try out. I'm going to give this 90 points. I think it's a beautiful, complex wine. And I would drink this with fried chicken. I think you could actually even go for KFC here because the acidity would just break up the fattiness of the, the crust and it wouldn't overpower the meat. I think this, this should work really well. So next up, we have the first red wine, the 2019 Verente Duro from Nieport in the Duro Valley. The Duro Valley is most famous for port wine, but as consumption for port wine is declining, people started to look at other options. And Nipot was one of the pioneers when it comes to the production of table wines. They produce really nice port wines, but also really good table wines. So, well, let's taste this one. The Nipot winery was founded in 1842, so a long time ago, and they now have projects in different regions and different countries. This wine is a blend of different grape varieties, as they often do in the Douro Valley, but mainly Tinta Joris and Turiga Franca. But most of the wineries in the Douro Valley are actually co-planted, so you don't have one grape variety in one parcel. You have lots of different grape varieties planted next to each other, and everything is basically harvested together. The wine was fermented in stainless steel and then aged in barriques for 22 months. But I don't really get a lot of barrique flavor here. It's actually much more fruit driven. The wine has actually quite a restrained fruit character. It smells of blackberries, black pepper, licorice, spices. So it's not, well, it's actually not very fruit driven. It's more 
spicy. On the palate, it's actually quite lean and structured. I think it is good, but well, I actually think it misses a little bit well, more body, more richness. There's something missing. I'm going to rate this 86 points, and I think this could have been a bit better. This is a wine from the Douro Valley, a really warm climate that produces rich and concentrated wines. But they purposely went for a wine that is a little bit more restrained, more structured with 13% of alcohol, which is fine. But I think if the grapes would have been a little bit more ripe, this could have been more complete um, a little bit more exciting, but this is just my own opinion. The last one is the 2019 Fita Prete Palpite Tinto Reserva from Alentejo. Alentejo is a huge region in the south of Portugal, covering roughly one third of its land mass. And it's actually most well known for the production of cork. Most of the corks that are used in the world for wine come from Alentejo. But when it comes to the wine production, the region wasn't necessarily seen as a well, high quality wine producer, but that has changed over the last few decades as more and more producers are focusing on getting the best out of those vineyards. This winery was founded in 2003 by Antonio Macanita, and he's working with an English consultant named David Booth. In this blend, they use Alicante Boucher, which is a Tantrouillet grape variety, so a grape that adds quite a lot of color to the wine and Aragonesh, which is also Tempranillo. It's just another synonym for the same grape variety. So yeah, wine is complicated. This wine was fermented spontaneously. There was a post-fermentation maceration for 21 days. So the wine was left in contact with the skins to extract a little bit more of that color, tannins, and so on and so forth. And then it was aged in barriques for 18 months. This is actually really well made. They combine the spicy flavors of the oak with the sour cherry character of the fruit. On the palate, it's juicy and rich. The tannins are present. There is good acidity there. It actually feels very complete. So I'm going to rate this 93 points. I think this is beautiful. A really good red wine. All right, this was a really fun tasting. As you can see, Portugal can bring quite a lot of different styles and different grape varieties to the table. And all of these wines were around 20 US dollars. So they're still pretty affordable while bringing serious quality into your glasses. My favorite two were the Palpite and the Encruzado, two wines that are just beautiful and I think probably not something that everyone has tasted before. So you should check those out. But the other ones were also really good. There was no dud here. They were all performing really well. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is what do you think about Portuguese wines? Do you like them or not? Let me know down below. I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay Thirsty.